Christy Bowen. Hi, this is Christy Bowen. When I was presenting at VO Atlanta 2017, during my e-learning presentations, I had mentioned to several people about how there is a way in Twisted Wave to diminish the breaths all at one time. That way, you don't have to do it breath by breath, which takes a lot of editing time. So I have had lots of requests for the process on how to do that. So I wanted to make this quick video tutorial and show you guys how to do that process. Now, this is a 17 and a half minute recording that I did for an e-learning client. And um, this is, I've saved it, but that's it. I haven't done anything else. I'm gonna very quickly show you the exact process I use. I, I'm going to remove all the breaths from this or diminish all the breaths from this in just a few seconds. I'm gonna do this real quickly, show you exactly how long it really does take once you get all your parameters set and then we'll go back through and do it step by step. So this is what I would normally do. After I've saved it, this is how long it takes to do the entire process. That's because I have all my presets done. And it is now diminishing all the breaths throughout the entire 17 and a half minute recording. So this is a very fast process once you learn how to do it, which I will show you in just a moment. And it is now done. That's it. Now you hit save. Well, in this case, I'm not going to because I want to show you how I did that. But that's it. Now there are no breaths in between all these words, uh, in between all these sentences. So that's a very simple, easy thing to do. Hopefully you'll be doing this on all of your recordings very soon, and it will save you a large amount of editing time. So let's undo that. And let me show you in detail exactly what happened, because here are my breaths, just so you can see what they look like. Here are some breaths and things. Um, my noise floor is pretty low. Uh, as you can see, very low noise floor. So these parameters are set for me and my speech pattern and how I sound and what I do. So of course, all these numbers and things that you're about to see are set for me and my personal preferences. You'll have to play, play with this so that you can set it for yourself. Um, so the first thing after you've saved your file is you go up to select. Choose detect silences. It analyzes the file, and you'll get all these black highlighted areas. That is what uh, Twisted Wave is selecting. So in this case, as you can see, it's uh, choosing a breath here, and then there's this large amount of silent space here um, that it is choosing. Um, these are the numbers that I have set for myself, but of course, these are things that you can play with. And so here's the threshold. And let's just play with this for right now and watch the black areas, and you'll see... So, you know, the larger, the smaller the number, I guess, the negative number, less and less is chosen. So you're going to have fewer breaths taken out. So, and of course, the higher the number, you're losing your speech. So you have to find that nice sweet spot. For me, I just happened to find minus 29. You know, it just seemed to be what worked for me. Um, same with minimum silence duration. Again, you know, you change this and it'll start getting more and more uh, places within your recording and some of these breaths, some of these small little ones in between words are necessary for natural speech, especially with e-learning. You know, the more natural it is, the better off your clients are going to like what you're hearing. Um, a lot of e-learning is heard through earbuds at people's desks. So removing every single sound in between is very harsh on the ear and is not something that is natural. And it takes the learner out of what they're trying to concentrate on, which is the information, not how you sound and not this weird kind of you know, strange almost noise gate that we would impose by removing every single thing. I am going to put these back to the numbers that I use uh, for comfort and safety for myself for when I do this project in a few minutes. Um, here is another, the maximum sound duration. Again, this, you know, this is something to play with. It shows you the more, you know, the bigger you move the numbers around, it will determine, as you can see up here in the timeline, it's moving, not in this highlighted area I'm at at the moment, um, but it shows you which areas are being chosen. So that's something you're just going to have to play with. I mean, this, these are all kind of subjective. Um, now, the one weird thing about Twisted Wave is that um, left padding and right padding, normally you think left would be the left side of one of these black bars and right would be the right. Um, in the version of Twisted Wave I'm using, which is 1.17.3, I'm still on Mac 
OS 9, uh, 10.9. I have not upgraded in a while. So again, your mileage may vary, as they say, uh, depending on which uh, version you're on. And from what I understand, Thomas has been made aware of this, but left padding actually controls the right side and right padding controls the left side. It's just a little quirk. Um, it may have changed, but if you have an older version or you're using older um, updated or not updated versions like I am, this is the case. So watch what happens when I move this bar here on the right-hand side of these black bars. You'll see it start to move away. Well, in this particular area right here, this is a breath. So let's kind of zoom in a little bit more so you can see this. This, ooh, wrong one. This area here on the left padding, and well, it says left padding, but it's actually the right side. The more you move it, you know, you're going to have more of the breath, less of the breath. If you go too far, you're going to cut into the word. So you want to move it to where it's a nice, comfortable distance where it's getting most of your, most all of the breath, but without getting the word. And as you scroll through, you can see sometimes it does more or less of that. Um, the number I particularly like for this, I had found, and I just, you know, it works for me, so I use it. Um, it's something you will have to play with over time. Same with right, in this case, right padding. It's going to move the left side of the, uh, the black highlighted area. Now, the one thing you'll notice is here, this is the end of a word. This is probably a K or a T or a P or something like that. Here, it's getting all of the breath. You will find that it's almost impossible to get just your breaths and not get the end of a, a T or a P or a K or um, an S sometimes. Um, we will go through in just a minute and I will show you how I manage that and what I do. It's still a little bit of an edit, but it is way faster and much easier than how, uh, you know, doing this breath by breath by breath. So do know that sometimes, you know, it will take a little play to figure out how not to cut off your, uh, get it, you know, not, not delete the breaths, but also not cut off the ends of words. So these are the things that I've set, that my presets that work for me. So they're all always set. So every time you come back to this, these numbers will always be the same. You don't have to enter these each time. Um, the one thing you're doing, the one thing you can do here is set this to select silences. There are other ways to use this function, um, but select silences is what you're trying to use. Uh, you can select sounds, place markers, delete silences. Don't choose delete silences. What that does is it literally will collapse everything. So if you, every black area here that's highlighted, if I selected de delete silences here and hit apply, all of those areas would be crunched together. So now all of a sudden there's no space between any words I say. You don't want that. So select silences, leave it there, you're set, you're ready to go. You hit apply. Now it doesn't do anything other than leave those black marked areas, highlighted areas there. So now what you do is you hit, and this is already a preset button within Twisted Wave, you choose the F key, which is amplify. Now we're not actually amplifying, we're deamplifying. Um, and I'm setting this for myself. I found that minus 20 works for me. That's a little aggressive in some ways for some people potentially, but my noise floor is so low and also for my particular speech and what my clients like, they don't want to hear complete silence, but they also want to, they don't really want to hear massive breaths. Minus, minus 20 for me works well. There's a tiny bit of a breath there, so it's a little natural, but it's almost all silent in between otherwise, but it's not completely dead silent where it sounds very unnatural. So once you've set this to, you know, minus 10, minus 15, minus 20, whatever works for you, again, you know, play with this and see what you like the best and maybe even send a sample to a client if they're asking, you know, and see what they say or a very good client you have. Just say, hey, which one do you prefer, this one or this one? Um, you know, that is if you have a really good relationship with the client. If they want absolute dead silence, then set it at zero and then you're good to go. Then it's all completely gone. So once you've done this, for me, minus 20, I hit apply and it starts applying what we've just requested it to do. It starts from right to left and you'll see the black bars are kind of grayed out now. As the process works, it will deamplify and you're done. That's it. So let me play a few of these pieces for you so you can see what has happened to it. Um, 
And there will also be some places in here that I can show you where I've cut off a word and I need to go back and repair that. It's a very easy process to do. So looks like here I can tell by my own speech pattern and I, I just I'm used to looking at my own waveform. I can tell this has been truncated. This word is not fully there. So Eh, that's not so bad, but what you can do is highlight that little area after it. I hit F again for amplify. Instead of minus 20, we're going to 20. That's basically, you know, negating what I did before. I hit amplify and boom, the whole word is back and you can tell. It just sounds better. So let me see if I can find another one of these where it's an obvious, it's cut off the end of a word, a P, a T, a, you know, whatever. Um, sometimes F's. You know, it depends, again, on your speech pattern and what happens for you. Um, it looks like here's one. Okay. It cut off that v. That it was very abrupt. So I can tell by looking at it, and you can too. You'll see the kind of a space there. Highlight just a little area. Hit F. It's already set at 20. Hit Apply. It's back. So now it's representative. Okay. The whole V is there. Let's see if we can find a few more. But you'll notice that in between these words, here's the breath. This is the breath right here. So in between, let's see what this sentence is. Ah, this is a good one. I can tell it's cut off a word. See, there's a little bit of a breath there. There's a slight breath, but it's not, it's not completely silent, but it's not a huge breath that we would hear normally, especially when you're using headphones, um, especially very bad earbuds. <laughs> so that's what a lot of people have to do. If I can find a, a sample where I've cut off a word, I'm trying to find an, a K or a T. Or what happens is, ah, here's one. Located. Located. The D is gone. So we're just going to take this, hit F again, and put it back. Now there's a full D there, located. Equipment is located. So that's how we repair, but that's so much simpler and takes so much less time because most of your words will not be cut off that you can just keep editing. Now, if you run into one that's cut off, obviously this looks like it's cut off again. That is so much simpler to do and takes so much less time, actually. Oh, this is something that could happen every now and then. So. If you select too much of this, what happens is you'll get this weird spike. Listen to what this, this does. You don't want that. Just make sure you're only selecting the part that has been deamplified. Amplify it back, and you're good. So these are very simple, quick tips. Hopefully they've helped you. Let's see if this is one of them. OK, this is a great example. Risk, Ks. Things like K's, T's, S's, they get cut off, and sometimes they're harder to deal with. Okay, so that K was not all there. Um, in this case, highlight it. It's back. Oh, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's just part of the K that's missing. There it is. And again, it's just something you have to play with, and you will get very good at this and very fast at this over time and as you uh, know what your waveform looks like and what your speech pattern looks like. But that is what you can do very quickly with Twisted Wave all at one time. You saw how long it took in the beginning. Quick, so a few simple steps. Just play with it. And I hope that is very helpful to you. If you do have any questions, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks for watching.